girls welcome or welcome back to my channel i hope you're all having an amazing day so in today's video i'm doing the highly requested blender 2.83 animation tutorial in this video i'll be using blender 2.83 but this works for blender 2.8 and any of the others in the 2.8 family before you watch this tutorial please go and watch my blender 2.8 gfx tutorial so that you know how to make a normal gfx in here because i will not be explaining that in this video the first step is to just make a normal gfx and i'll be right back when i have it all done so as you can see i've just made the starting pose for animation it's quite simple but <laughs> it's okay once you have the first pose of your animation you need to add a camera so to do this click add and click camera then at the bottom go to view then cameras and active camera in this little printer button right here you can set your camera to be whatever size you want personally I like keeping the default size because this is the right size for a YouTube video or but if you wanted a square one you could do that as well I think right there is good and unfortunately the dog is gonna have to go oh I'm sorry <laughs> So once we have our pose ready, it's time to start animating. This is actually quite similar to 2.79, but I'm still going to explain everything in detail again. Down at the bottom where you have all of these numbers, this is called your timeline, and this sets how many frames you're going to have. In my previous video, I said 10 frames was 1 tenth of a second, but actually in Blender, the default is 24 frames per second. So you need 24 frames to make one second. I recommend making this a bit bigger so it's easier to work with. To do that, just hover your mouse over this black bar and then drag it upwards a bit. And that gives us enough space to work with. Next step to actually start animating is to click this circle right here. And if it turns blue, that means you're all set. For mine, I'm going to do a simple waving pose. I'm going to have this arm right here wave. I'm going to click on the limb. And for every limb or object you animate, you need to have a starting pose. So if you want your starting pose to be right here, I'm just going to take Take the rotation tool and just rotate it like the littlest bit. You need to move it just enough so that there's a little orange diamond shape at the bottom. Just a tiny bit is all you need. So I recommend taking this playhead and dragging it 20 boxes ahead, but if only doing a small movement, then maybe only make it 10 frames. But if you're doing a really big movement, then maybe make it 40 frames or 60 frames. It just depends. So at 20 frames, I want her arm to be up. I don't want it to be waving just yet, but just up a bit. Maybe like that is good. How you animate is you choose where you want the one to start, and then you choose where you want it to end up in a certain amount of frames. So then I'll move the playhead to 40 frames there, and at 40 frames, that's when I want it to be up in the air. Now I want the elbow to wave. Because this movement is much smaller, I'm only going to put 10 frames in between each of the waving movements. So the first thing you need to do is give it a keyframe at the very beginning. I'll just put it right there, that's fine. And then at 40, I don't really want it to move because I want it to stay in the spot. So I'll just put it there. So 50 frames. This is around 2 seconds. I want her arm to go in. And then at 60 frames, I'm going to have the arm move back outwards just like that. Now that arm is fully animated. Now I'm going to repeat the same process on the other arm. I'm going to head back to the first frame and choose the starting position for it. And then at 20 frames, I'll just have it downwards a bit. This one I'm not really going to focus as much on, but right there is good. And then I'm going to move the keyframe again to 40 frames and just have it come inwards like that. Nothing too big, but it's fine. And then at 60, which is where it, the animation will end, I'm just going to move it upward using the red axis. So now my arms are fully animated and the last thing I want to animate is my head. In this tutorial, I'm not going to be using any props, but if you were going to be using any props, just animate them the same way as I'm animating the head. So go back to the beginning and choose the starting spot for it. So just move it a little bit just to get a keyframe. And then at 20, I usually don't do anything too crazy for the head. I usually just move the head side to side a little bit. So now, so now the head is animated. Now the next step before we animate the camera is to set an end to your animation. So this just shows how many frames it will be. So like I said, mine will be 60. So just type in 60 and press enter. You don't really need to change this one. And if you don't set an end, then that means you'll have to wait 250 frames for it to fully render. So make sure you have an end for it. Now the next step is to animate the camera. So to do this, right click the camera you'll know it's selected when there's an orange highlight around it then drag your playhead back to frame one and you want to choose where it's going to start so you choose that by using the same buttons we used to move and i actually really like where it is right now but maybe i'll move it back a bit and then have it zoom in so then maybe at 20 frames we can have it move in a bit and at 40 i'll have it move upwards and then at 60 i'll just have it move over a little bit maybe like that I still want my avatar to be in the frame, and because of that, I'm actually going to rotate the head to be facing towards me at the end. So now, 
I'm going to choose the color for the background. So to do this, I'm just going to add a mesh piece and make it a plane and then just use the move tools to, and then to change the color of it, just scroll down to this texture button, click new, and then just make it whatever you want. I'm obviously gonna go for blue. So now that we have the color all selected, let's get it ready to render. Okay, so you want to go to this little printer button on the side and scroll down and where it says FFmpeg video, you want to change it to AVI JPEG. That's the video format for Blender 2.8. And then right above it, you'll see a box that says slash TMP slash and there's nothing after it. So this is where we choose where we want it to save. You need to pick a place to save it beforehand. This is super important. Otherwise, when it's done rendering, you won't be able to save it. So make sure you do this step. To save it, click the little folder icon. I recommend making a folder to save it to. I have a folder on my desktop called Save GFXs where I save all of my animations to. And click Accept once it's ready. Click Accept again. And as you can see, I have it saved. Blender 2.8, they introduced a new rendering mode called Eevee, which I recommend using for animations because it renders really fast. The quality isn't as great as Cycles, but it still works pretty well. So when you use that, if I head into the rendered view, as you can see, it's really dark, but ambient occlusion doesn't work in this mode. What you need to do is click the circle next to color and click environment texture. And for my lighting, I recommend using HDRIs in Eevee because it makes the best lighting. It makes it the best quality. I will leave a link to my favorite HDRI for lighting in the description. Just go on it. And then once you're on the page for it, where it says download, click download the 4K option and then you'll be all set. So click open once you've downloaded it. Go to your downloads and find it. I have no clue how to pronounce it, but this is what it's called. Again, it'll be linked in the description. So click open image. And as you can see, the lighting is really good. I really like how this HDRI makes lighting look. So now we have it all ready to render. Once everything is all set up, go to the render button at the top left and click render animation. And as you can see, in 10 seconds, it's already rendered one frame, which is so much faster than Blender 2.79 could ever be. I'll be back when it's all been rendering so that we can do the next step. My animation has just finished rendering. Once it's all done, you just can click the X at the top to get rid of that screen. But if you would like the quality to be slightly better, all you have to do is go back to the camera and go back to cycles. But once that's done, just go to the folder where you saved your animation. And as you can see, there it is. So if you want to, you can slow it down and add text. So that is how to make an animation in Blender 2.83 or any of the other Blender 2.8 versions. Thank you so much for watching. If at any point you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up as I really appreciate it. I hope you all have an amazing day or night or whatever time it is and I will talk to you all soon. Bye Pearls!